What's up everyone? Today we are at Falling Creek Disc Golf Course. I got my brother John here and this is kind of like a new little video series I want to do. I remember from back home when I was in Southern California learning about disc golf. I really only played like one, two, maybe three courses, but we had a bunch where we were. What I want to do is not miss out on that opportunity being here in Virginia. So from my doorstep to a 30 mile radius, I want to play every course and bring you guys along and just kind of open you know people's eyes to what is around here because you might have a course right next to your house and not even know about it and that's something we missed out on when we started disc golfing so hopefully this kind of opens the door for a lot of people to try it and play their local courses and just kind of see what's around like i said falling creek park this is the closest one to our house currently there's one in the works that will probably be towards the end of this series because it's not done yet but uh hopefully this works out and uh it's enjoyable. So what I'm gonna use to find all these courses is UDisc. So with UDisc, I'm gonna keep score so you guys can follow along also on UDisc. Like we said, this is Falling Creek Park. It's located in Bedford, Virginia, and even though it's free to play here, it's really well kept, and that's why we love coming here. So if you've been following our channel for a while, you've definitely seen this hole before. This is hole one on the yellow layout, and it's one of several open holes that this course has to offer. This is a great course for any skill level, but the majority of the holes are going to be longer than a beginner course, and the elevation change is really great to practice on. When you play here, you're able to practice different lines and different shots. We see Paul going with a backhand, um, but then when Jonathan is throwing his approach, he switches it up to a forehand. He's probably doing that because of the slope that the basket is sitting on, but being able to practice these types of shots without worrying too much about out of bounds or rough is really helpful. And being able to practice on fairways, whether you're a lefty or a righty, is really great too. And this is a good example of that. From this angle, we're seeing the elevation changes that this course has. And not only does elevation make for great tournament practice, but it also allows the course designer to create these shorter holes that are still challenging and really fun. And speaking of elevation change, this is one of my favorite holes on this course. The fairway slopes down the entire way to the basket and it sits beside the rough. It's a challenge to make it all the way down the fairway, but you can practice different approaches or use different discs or try different angles without worrying about losing your disc or going deep into the rough, which as you can see to the right of the basket can be very, very thick. This hole is just another example of the different lines we can practice when we come here. Paul sees the fairway and thinks, I'll just go over the top. And John goes straight up the middle, right up the fairway to get to the basket that's sitting under some guardian trees on the left. Again, the elevation turns a straightforward hole into a challenge, even on the putting green. I really love that John was able to be in the video as a lefty because it really helps show off the different lines we can take when we play these holes. When we come here, we can practice different types of shots, but still play the exact same holes, which can save a lot of time. John did keep it a little too tight, and so the trees shortened his drive, but now he can practice his up shots. The basket sits on a slope, so he's just reading the green and taking his time with this approach because he doesn't want his disc to stand up and roll down the hill. The hills on this side of the course aren't severe, but they're still big enough that your disc can speed up and roll away. These next few holes start to introduce some of the tighter lines on this course. The trees start to guard the basket more often, and there are definite gaps you need to hit. But like we said, whether you're left-handed dominant or right-hand dominant, there's opportunities for both types of shots on these fairways. <laughs> there are three fairly difficult par fours toward the end of this course. Being able to practice a mixture of both par threes and fours on well-maintained fairways for free is one of the reasons we love it here, but having that mixture is actually pretty unique to this area. This 20 hole course finishes with a wide open par three at only 256 feet uphill. This is a fun birdieable hole to close out your round with. This was a temporary hole for a while, but as of 2020, it's officially part of this course. We just finished our round at Falling Creek Park. It's a really fun course. Uh, I'm really a big fan of the front nine, uh, just the openness and the, the variety of shots there. All the courses I've played here so far, I haven't played many, that's why you know I'm doing this series is so I can go out and explore them all, but of the ones I've played, this is probably the one I come to the most often, mainly because it's so open. 
I like to come out here and practice uh, practice a lot of these open shots, working my forehand, backhand, putters, mids, all that stuff. Uh, you got any thoughts on the course? Uh, I like that it's, it's half of it's open and half of it is wooded. So it really, you get a little bit of both, which is nice. You get to <laughs> practice all your shots that you'd play in a regular tournament round. I, I actually shot pretty well. I shot 14 down through the 20 holes, had a little uh, lame stretch through there. Do you want to know what you shot? <laughs> yeah, might as well say it. He shot four down. He had two bogeys in there, but uh, yeah, it's no. not awful for, for how I thought I was playing. Yeah, so <laughs> um, thank you for, for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. I know what to do. Yeah, you know, push that little bell button or whatever it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we look forward to doing another one and we'll see you next time.